hate to be at the helm of a German, Japanese, or North American automaker. Uh, an automaker that has a mid-size SUV, be it a two-row or three-row SUV. Because no matter how much money, time, effort, resources I would put into research and development, into technology, into design, I would always find myself looking over my shoulder to see what the Koreans are up to. Yes, the Hyundai Motor Group is relentless, restless, tireless. They are constantly evolving their product, improving it, engineering new stuff, creating a product that you, the buyer, the consumer, absolutely wants and cannot do without. This is exhibit A of that. This is a 2021 Hyundai Santa Fe. Now it was only, it was introduced about midway, two thirds of the way through 2018 for the 2019 model year. This was a whole new generation of the very popular midsize SUV. Now for the 2021 model year, well, Hyundai's at it again because they've done a complete facelift, revised the interior, and not only that, but have introduced a completely new family of powertrains. This is a mid-cycle update. Really? This 2021 Hyundai Santa Fe actually happens to be a hybrid version. Yes, and that's why I have it here this week, because I was eagerly trying to find out if Hyundai can do hybrids right. I can tell you right now that they certainly aren't doing it wrong. So what that means is that in the following video, we'll do the usual walk around, maybe point out a few of the changes that Hyundai's done aesthetically and interior. We'll talk about pricing and then we'll take it for a spin and I will come to some kind of conclusion as I normally try and do and tell you, well, essentially why you should have this vehicle on the list, on your shopping list, but keep something in mind. Let's go for it. Okay, just before I go on, if I sound congested, it's not COVID, it's my seasonal allergies, which are in full force at the moment. So if I sniffle, I apologize. Now, pricing in the US for a 21 Santa Fe is $27,000. The first available hybrid is $33,650. In Canada, base price for the essential is $31,399. There's a preferred, which is just over $36,000. Then you get to the luxury hybrid, which is this trim right here, which is $43,799. There's also a new trim, the ultimate calligraphy for just over $47, if I'm not mistaken. If you do want the hybrid powertrain, it is a $2,900 option on the preferred so you can get your least expensive hybrid is just under forty thousand dollars in canada so the base base santa fe includes a heated steering wheel wireless apple carplay and the android auto eight inch display the luxury throws in a 12.3 inch instrument panel that's a digital one wireless charging a heated rear seats cool front seats 19 inch wheels and so on and so forth so as we're here three quarters front you can get a very good glimpse of the changes made to the front end i mean the most obvious are right here in the light treatments but the grill the whole fascia has been uh, redesigned but it still looks very much like the previous well not the previous generation but the 2019 and 2020 santa fe the wheels are also new and they are absolutely cool Kind of a mix between a retro muscle car and SUV tough truck tires, wheels, my apologies. Uh, the rear end has also been nipped and tucked, new tail light treatments, and uh, that's it. So let's look on the inside. Power hatch, which actually has a two speeds, normal and fast, which is fantastic. Also fantastic, this enormous truck this is uh, 1032 liters of boot space it is really really wide i mean you could actually probably fit two golf bags side by side and a couple more on top of that on an angle and never have to put the 60 40 seats back down 
Uh, not much storage right here because it's used up by, oh, what's that? Is that a little battery? Maybe. Uh, but there's this though. That is absolutely fantastic space. You can literally move into this mid-size SUV. And what I do love about this and the Sorento is, well, how it's been designed to accept the family. Uh, large openings at the bottoms, good size, the rear doors, of course. They don't open, you know, nine degrees, but it's wide enough. Oh, here's a nice touch, uh, like on my Luxury. That's something that wasn't even available in my Yukon Denali. Wink, uh, well, anyway, doesn't matter. Rear bench actually slides fore and aft and tilts back. It's just fantastic because it makes setting up the kids' seats not only a breeze, but it gives them a lot of room. Look at the amount of leg room right there. You won't squeeze a third person between the two seats, but the kids are happy and, well, happy kids mean happy parents, perhaps. Uh, up front, uh, look, the fit, the finish, everything is very impressive. I mean, the initial impressions are always extremely favorable. Contrast stitching. I mean, some of the plastics, you know, they look a little bit better than they actually are, but this is fantastic. One of the biggest changes on the inside is this center console. Gone is the shifter replaced with these buttons, uh, but this whole new configuration has enabled Hyundai to set up a large storage spot right under there. So let's slide aboard, start her up. Now there's your 12.3 inch display, which actually changes with some drive modes. So right now I'm in an Eco, which is your default drive mode. So if I go into Sport, boom. If I go into Smart, boom. And I can go to the Terrain drive modes, which I'm not entirely sure why they are, but I guess whatever. So you can do that. But the displays don't exactly change in this case. Um, this is your 8-inch display standard. It goes up to a 10 and a quarter, if I'm not mistaken, in the calligraphy. But as is, it's quite fantastic. I mean, you have these, well, you know, Actually, I am already in media. There you go, radio, and the track setup. Let's just do that. As you can see, the screen responds actually quite quickly. The menus are easy to navigate, easy to work out. The HVAC controls here are fantastic. This is very straightforward as well. Uh, I mean, this is something I'll just have to deal with. It, it works, obviously. Uh, storage as a whole, well, other than the bin under there, it's a little bit tight here because if you have something plugged into your USB, well, you know, maybe a mask or two in here. This is your wireless charger, which you slide your phone in this way. And there's a flap. I don't know if it'll, it won't zoom in. Anyway, you can see the flap there. This isn't that bad either, but I do love the fact that the designers added storage over here. Visibility, or actually, as I'm here, look at the headliner. This is some really choice looking material. It's actually really, really nice. Um, okay, so visibility, uh, it's just, it's fantastic. It's probably some of the best forward and uh, side visibility you can get in a midsize SUV. Look at the amount of sight you have right there. Everything is beautifully laid out. Look, the, the fit, the finish, the materials, the presentation, that impression of quality of top-notch stuff the value you get I mean look at the speaker girl look at the textures in that why would anyone do that same with the quilted leather here it's beautiful it's fantastic it's well you know what it all this praise it doesn't end right now so uh, we're gonna go for a little drive and uh, you'll see it, it's it's still really good All right, let's just jump right into this and talk about the hybrid powertrain. So it is a 1.6 liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine that is common to the Hyundai family. It's a 178 horsepower, 195 pound-feet of torque to which is mated a 59 horsepower electric motor, which is or works in conjunction with a six-speed automatic transmission, which has been tuned for the hybrid powertrain, which then eventually sends power to Hyundai's H-Track all-wheel drive system, which is standard from preferred on up and available on the base essential. Uh, total system output is a convincing 226 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque. So it's, uh, as I said, it joins the new powertrains for the 21 Santa Fe 
which include the naturally aspirated 2.5 liter four cylinder engine and the turbocharged 2.5 liter four cylinder engine. Essentially the same engines offered in the all new 2021 Sorento. More bad news for the competition, essentially. Uh, I don't know when I, or I should say, I seriously doubt that you watched my Ford Explorer hybrid video review or read my review on Motor Illustrated, but I did note something about that hybrid. Essentially, it's a highway hybrid where the electric powertrain assistance, if you will, is not for the city where typically hybrids or plug-in hybrids shine. So the Explorer is backwards, but this one I'm happy to report is normal. Because what happens is that the, the, the uh, Santa Fe Hybrid is rated at 7.1 liters per hundred kilometers in the city, 7.9 liters per hundred kilometers on the highway. So that makes sense. And that, <laughs> and this is where it gets really, really good. Now the combined fuel economy number is 7.4 liters per hundred kilometers. And I happen to be averaging between 7.4 and 7.5. The best part, is that more than 90% of my driving so far, and this is another short short loan, has been on the highway. So for all intents and purposes, this seems like a true hybrid that will give you enhanced efficiency in the city. Uh, there are other things going on too, like you notice the drive modes. Eco drive mode is your default mode, which works well in the city, but I found when you're getting on the highway, because everything is kind of dulled, uh, you need to put it minimally in smart. But I mean, you can work with the eco mode if you had to. Uh, next up, so not only did they revamp the exterior and the interior and add all new powertrains, but Hyundai's actually improved the structure of this vehicle for 2021. Yes, it's actually a little bit stiffer than it previously was. I, I don't know why they would do that. Okay. I don't know why they would do that because when I drove the 2019 Santa Fe, the overall driving impressions were very positive. And that still applies today. And if that wasn't enough, they've also revised the brake booster. They've replaced it and they've changed the discs. I recall in the previous generation Sorento, and I think I also said the same thing about the previous generation Santa Fe, is that brake response was a little bit slow and it was a lot of kind of mush in the in initial pedal uh, travel when you're braking. Uh, the good news is that all of that is gone with the 2021. Brake pedal response is amazing. It's very, feels good. You feel like you're in control when you're coming down on the brake pedal. Uh, the six-speed automatic transmission is fine. I mean, I have nothing negative to say about it. Uh, it will give you the gear you need and will give you altogether the powertrain, I mean, the necessary power, even in eco drive mode when you're on the highway and you need to pass or whatever. Uh, the ride quality is good. I suspect that the models with the 18-inch wheels, so the, the base uh, preferred and the essential, the ride quality is probably a notch better uh, the narrower sidewalls with the 19s do allow some of the road's harshness to filter in, but overall, it's still quite good. And and that's the thing with this 2021 Santa Fe is that it is the hybrid, especially. I mean, I can tell you that the 2.5 turbo is a monster of power with like 311 pound-feet of torque in the Sorento I reviewed very recently. And a 2.5 naturally aspirated engine will give you all the necessary get up and go you need for the daily commute. Uh, but in this case, as is the case with most hybrids, most underlined, many times highlighted, excuse me, um, this might be the way to go. Uh, I don't see any real issues with the way it operates. It's a responsive, it's somewhat proving to be efficient in the driving I've been doing only for the last day because it goes back tomorrow uh, but once again and as always or yeah 
these vehicles, like the Telluride, the Palisade, the Forte, the Sonata, the Elantra, everything that the Koreans, and that also applies to the G80, the G90, GV80, all of these vehicles are just mind-blowingly good. You, you step in and you ask yourself, why would I even consider shopping a competitor? The thing is that if you want a long-term relationship with one of these vehicles, I'm still not convinced that it, they are a better choice than something you would get from Toyota or Honda or Mazda. Um, or even Chevy for that matter, or Dodge. Nothing. None of these are perfect, obviously. But there's still something going on with a lot of the medium-term reliability of these vehicles that makes me wonder that any relationship longer than say 36 maybe 48 months might be an unnecessary risk and bottom line is the 2021 Santa Fe hybrid is it's just phenomenal physically by far I prefer the Sorento it's just got just a, a, a more convincing, more aggressive truck-ish styling, both inside and out. Uh, but uh, until the hybrid Sorento shows up, well, if you want Sorento, I mean, a hybrid, this is the one. There's also a plug-in hybrid coming a little bit later this year, uh, but I would not even bother or put my name on the list. Just get the hybrid. Save yourself, I don't know, six or seven or eight thousand dollars and bask in the immediate efficiency and savings from this quite impressive hybrid.